Hi there, this is Pamela Coey and welcome to my webinar. Would you like to create 16 personal cohesive paintings in 90 days or less without fear, procrastination, or getting stuck? Use my three stages to solve your biggest painting struggles. Let's get started. Why do you need to hear about my three problem solving stages? Well, artists struggle with three huge problems. Problem number one is mind games. Mind games include procrastination, fear, doubt, and lack of confidence. It's your left brain telling you that you have better things to do, you shouldn't be wasting your time, and telling you that you're just not good enough. I don't know if this sounds familiar to you, but I really struggled with these mind games. Problem number two is a basic understanding of color and design principles. What I found in 30 years of painting is that you must have this knowledge or you're really going to struggle. If you don't have this, you get stuck, you have a lack of problem solving skills and solutions. Problem number three is applying the principles of color and design. It's one thing to know the basics, but it's another thing to then apply it to your work. Problem number three involves unfinished paintings and expressing your personal voice. My three stages will help you create powerful design and personal color so you can express your personal, authentic voice in art. Proudly call yourself an artist, master color and design principles so your artistic voice is clear, and finish your paintings with strength and confidence. As well, you'll show up in your studio with excitement. You may or may not know me from a YouTube channel. Many times when I go to a live workshop, students tell me that they saw me on YouTube. That always surprises me. I started my YouTube channel just a few years ago. I had just gotten a brand new cell phone and I saw the video button. I had never done a video before. I just hit play and started painting and I had a lot of fun. I found that when I shared my work with others, they wanted to know what I was thinking and I love to share what I know. I'm really grateful for all of my subscribers and if you're one of them, thanks very much. So a little brief history about me and why I'm talking to you today. I always loved art as a kid. It was always my favorite subject. I had a lot of early success in life. I loved music and art. I loved academics and sports. And I kind of excelled at everything, mostly because I was an overachiever. I was one of those really annoying people. My mother was Japanese and she had a lot of pride. And it was just built in my DNA to uh, be a people pleaser. So when it became time to make that big decision, you know, what should I do when I go to college? Nobody was saying I should become an artist. And I'm sure a lot of you have experienced that as well. I hear that from many people that due to parental pressure, they decided not to pursue a degree in art. So I did the right thing and I decided to pursue a degree in biochemistry. So for four years, I essentially locked myself in every library I could find in the darkest corner. And I repeatedly tried to fit the square peg into a round hole. Um, it was not a good fit for me. And the result was that just a few months before graduating with this degree that I had worked so hard for, I had a nervous breakdown. I basically couldn't do anything anymore. And when I say that, I, I truly mean that. Uh, I could barely walk through a doorway. If I was going into a lab, I had a massive panic attack. I couldn't eat with others. I couldn't sit on chairs. I couldn't play the piano anymore. I didn't really understand what had happened to me, but I did have sort of a traumatic experience. I now know it was called PTSD, but at the time, nobody knew what that was. I was just a hollow shell of who I used to be. It was truly devastating. Uh, I was about to graduate and I knew that I could not do anything in science. So. I had to think, you know, who am I? What can I do? I mean, I can't, I really can't do anything right now, except I thought back to the art that I loved. And of course that never left me. And in the end, it was art that saved me. I decided to really focus on the art that I always loved. I used my art to express the fear, the loss and the pain I had experienced. It was the first time I think I really put the content of my life into my art. You know, I had some success, but it wasn't always consistent. So there was something missing. And that's when I decided to go back to school and get my MFA. Well, the pieces started to fall into place. When I learned about color and design, everything really changed for me. It was that huge aha moment. And that's what I want to share because it's not enough to have technique. You really need to have this solid foundation 
and color and design. It's not hard to make good art, but it's really hard to make great art. And in order to make great art, I want to share with you what I learned that you actually must have in order to succeed. So after 30 years of painting and painting in four different mediums that I absolutely love, countless workshops and getting my MFA in 2010 and teaching at the college level and teaching workshops here and abroad, my mission is to share everything that helped me to succeed. I would love to see you succeed because your success is my success. And that's what I'm dedicated to. When you learn my three stages, you will conquer the mind games and bring fun back into your studio. You'll understand why color and design is the missing link. You'll feature what you love. And this is the content of your art. So let me show you my three stages to help you overcome crippling mind games, see why color and design will help you problem solve, get unstuck and finish your paintings. So artist problem number one is a pretty huge problem. I call it mind games. You know, it's, it's kind of that left brain versus right brain. The left brain is the analytical, logical, sensible side. It's usually the one that's telling the right side of the brain, which is creative, that you're not good enough, that you shouldn't be doing your art. You should leave the studio and find some other more useful career. I really struggle with that a lot. It leads to fear, procrastination, self-criticism, you know, walking into your studio and feeling like you must create something beautiful. It all basically shuts you down. Uh, I wonder if you've had that problem because I struggled with that for decades and I literally had to find a solution. So stage one offers a solution to these mind games. You need to play like a child. You need to have fun. Don't think, just do. And let your paintings grow up just like you did. Notice on the bottom here, I've circled child. So this is the first of my three stages. It's not that easy for us adults to put our mindset in that of a three-year-old. It took me a year, but when I was able to do it, everything literally did change. So let me show you what play looks like. So this is what play looks like in one of my cold wax and oil paintings called Roundabout. Pretend you're three. Remember how much fun it was? You didn't think, you didn't overthink, and you didn't criticize yourself. You didn't have doubt or feel a lack of confidence. You certainly didn't worry about creating a great painting, did you? You just picked up your crayons and you had fun. Do that. Embrace whatever happens, even if it's super ugly. I tell my students, ugly is good. It means you didn't overthink it. You can worry about the ugly mess you made later. It's way more important to stay in the game by showing up. Play is your best friend in your studio. During play, your creativity is unleashed and magical surprises just keep happening. Try it, be three again. So my stage one is be your inner child and play. Try different tools, different marks, and different shapes. Ask yourself, what haven't I done? What haven't I tried? And then do it. Don't aim for results. Be three again, play and have fun. If you are not experiencing fun, you're probably thinking too hard. A three-year-old has no time for judgment, self-criticism, or fear. Artist problem number two. If you have a lack of solid color and design foundations, you're actually going to get stuck a lot, and you're not going to know how to problem solve. This is another really big deal, and I hear about this a lot in my workshops and with the students that I have in my courses, and I get it. Like, I was stuck as well. I had very inconsistent results, and this happened again and again. Sometimes I'd have a hit and sometimes I have a miss and I didn't understand why I didn't know how to repeat my successes and I didn't know how to prevent my failures. So my stage number two, think about color and design a little bit more and act like a teenager in the play stage. You didn't really think at all. Well, now we're growing up a little bit and we're becoming that teen looking for that first love and taking risks. Notice how I've circled this word teen. This is my second stage. Let's take a look at explore. In the explore stage of this painting, I moved past being stuck by thinking about the things that I love. I thought about shape, I thought about pattern, and I thought about masking, all to create with intent the shapes I love. I chose colors that really resonated with me. Instead of the bright yellow, I started to tone things down. I happen to like sophisticated color, so I started working with grays. I started to search for gems. If they didn't just appear, I added them. I added areas of pattern. I added new shapes. 
I added, I subtracted, I concealed and revealed. And before I knew it, I had some areas in the painting that I was genuinely interested in featuring. So stage two is explore like a teenager. Keep trying new things and see how they feel. If you don't like ugly, define what ugly is and put in the opposite. Take risks, add, subtract, conceal, reveal, and be on the lookout for treasures. Stuck? Keep asking, what don't I have? Add what you don't have and then ask, is it better? Try new colors, new shapes, new patterns, new lines and techniques. Keep going until you see glimmers of hope. An artist problem number three is an inability to harness the power of design and color principles. Again, I can't stress enough how important this is. I see so many workshops where people are focused on technique, but having gone to dozens and dozens of workshops myself, very few of them ever talked about color and design. And that's at the heart of your success. Not knowing if or when your painting is finished or wondering if it could be better or stronger, not realizing that art is a visual language that can be learned are all things that happen when you don't know how to apply the principles of color and design. And when you do know these things, suddenly everything is so much easier and it's so much fun. So in my stage number three, it is time to think. In play, we didn't think at all. In explore, we thought a little bit, but now in stage three, we're an adult. So notice how I circled the word adult. In order to finish your paintings, you need a solid understanding of color and design, and you need to learn how to apply it. Many artists do not have this. Do you? Let's take a look at the clarify stage in my painting roundabout. Clarify is a time when you really have to rely on a solid foundation of color and design. If you don't have that, you're really at a very great disadvantage. And this is one of the biggest things I learned in my 30 years of painting. Before I had this knowledge, it was very, very difficult to consistently finish my work. But once I understood the foundations of color and design, what was happening with my line and my color, my shape and values, texture and direction, things started to make sense to me. I knew that if I wanted to say something clearly, I had to think about composition. I had to think about where my eye went first and how my eye was navigating through the painting. Clarify is a time for editing and taking out those things that don't need to be there, standing back, rotating your painting around and making sure it's balanced, it's harmonized, and making sure that you really love what you're featuring. This takes a lot of understanding of color and design. It's not hard, but you do need the foundation. And clarify, less is more. Declutter and edit as you focus on powerful design and personal color. Finesse, subtlety, and sensitivity as you refine your composition. Slow way down and scrutinize how your design is leading you throughout your painting. Check your balance by turning your painting in many directions. Add small surprises to make your work spectacular. Here's another one of my paintings so I can show you the three stages. It's called Up and Away. It's a 36 by 36 inch acrylic and mixed media painting on panel. This painting is about the many things that I love. Grids, unusual shapes, a sense of mystery, sophisticated grays with a few bright pops of color, graffiti, text and letters, mark making, and here's a summary of how this painting went through my three stages. Here's the first stage of play. As you can see, anything goes. This is the way the painting began with lots of color. Then I decided to cover it up. Why not? Then I decided to sand it back. It's something I hadn't done yet. And I was curious what would happen. Is it ugly? Oh yeah, it's ugly. The play stage looks messy, chaotic, and if all goes well, it should be pretty ugly too. But don't worry, ugly is good. In the explore stage of this painting, I learned to take risks. Notice the big black shape. I do love mark making and I love black. So I put a big blob of it here. This is a vertical wall. So the paint dripped all the way down my painting. I tried an interesting shape. This is a monoprint, turquoise. Here's a little red ball. I love stripes and I love pattern. 
As I looked at the painting, I decided that I didn't really like the stripes all that much. So I decided to paint some of it out. I also decided that that black was just a little bit too strong for me. I liked the drips, but I wasn't so happy with this big black blob. I added white over that turquoise shape because I wasn't really that happy with it. And then I added a new shape on top. I love teardrops. So I made a pattern down here and I decided that I didn't really like the stripes. So I got rid of those. I continued to go through this painting, just finding my way and thinking about design and color and all the things that I really love, like black and white. In this shape, I decided to make half of it black and half of it white, but in the end, it didn't make the cut. I painted over the black, I scraped away the white, but I did add three W's because I love typography. I kept the letters very subtle and low contrast, but here's a little bit of black. I colored this in a lime green. I added some paint to this teardrop. And now I had three areas that I was really enjoying in this painting. So in Explore, take risks, experiment, and be on the lookout. Add, subtract, conceal, reveal, and keep trying new things until you see glimpses of what you love. Remember, you know what you love when you see it. It's the same in your paintings. Think like a teenager to go where you haven't gone before. I found this to be the middle stages where I spend the most time. This is a time when a lot of artists get stuck. So just try things out and accept or reject the changes so you can move your painting forward. And now we're in Clarify. This is a time to edit and really scrutinize the color and design. See where your eye is going first and take away anything that doesn't need to be there. So as I studied this painting, I decided that I didn't really need this green square. It wasn't helping the composition. So I painted that out. Notice over here, I used to have two big black ovals. Well, that was too much. So I decided to paint this one out as well. I love red and decided that I liked the interaction between the bright red and the dark black. So I made this a little bit more saturated. For the typography, I wanted that to stand out just a little bit more. Notice how I made the white W a little bit brighter. And down here, I loved this teardrop shape. I had put Stabilo crayon over the top and decided that I just didn't want it connected to the edge. So I lightened this shape on the bottom. The clarify stage is the time when you declutter and feature your gems. You've identified what you love and now you clear away the dust so you and others can see clearly what you love. Question everything in your painting. Look for dominance within color, line, value, texture, etc., and apply the foundations of color and design to make your voice clear and your work strong. Become the editor in chief. No one but you can delete or add the final touches. Why? It's extremely personal. Here is the finished painting, Up and Away. My three stages have helped so many artists, and I'm so grateful for this. Karen wrote, the three stages helped a lot and gave me a new way of looking at the process of painting. The three stages helped a great deal. I never had any problems with play in my work, but the explore and clarify stages were a help in moving my paintings toward completion. Thanks, Barbara. The three stages were extremely helpful. I easily get bogged down and it was fantastic to have clear direction and reminders of how to proceed. Thank you, Susan. But this is the tip of the iceberg. In my online course, Powerful Design and Personal Color, you'll be watching over my shoulder as I play, explore, and clarify 16 paintings. You will also create 16 paintings in 90 days or less, but you can take as much time as you need because it's self-paced. You'll overcome procrastination and fear as you learn to play. You'll get unstuck, taking risks as you explore, and you'll finish your paintings and clarify as you apply the foundations of powerful design and personal color. My course also includes lots of demos, presentations, and downloadable PDFs, just like the college courses I taught. I share what I've learned in over 30 plus years of making art. It's all crammed into this course. You have lifetime access to this course as well, and it's available 24 seven. You also have a 30 day money back guarantee. Monica wrote, I enjoyed the course and found that my overall art technique improved immediately after following the three stages emphasized. My program works for beginners through advanced, any 2D medium, 
any genre of art from realism to abstraction. It works for those with very little time and it works for those with very little space to work. Art is not easy. My art professor told his professional art practices class that 90% of MFAs do not continue in art. Why is this? Well, too many artists struggle with endless mind games swirling in their heads, too much emphasis on technique rather than problem solving methods, lack of color and design fundamentals that you must know to be consistent. Well, now there's a way to break free from your struggles and stay in the game. My online course provides a roadmap to get you from start to finish. I provide you with a well-equipped toolbox filled to the brim with the principles of powerful design and personal color and my complete nine stages of creativity. It was all that I hoped it would be and more. Thanks, Connie. Right now, the thing that has been helping me the most is the nine stages chart. I have a bunch of work going and being able to look at the chart and see where I am with each piece is incredibly reassuring. Thank you, Heidi. I encourage you to invest in yourself. You are worth it. You do not need an MFA or an art degree. You'll learn way more than I did in grad school in this one course. Everything included in my course is an absolute must have. In order to provide you with this amount of information, I've included 11 plus hours of videos, presentations, and PDFs. It's worth $1,100. My nine stages of creativity flowchart is valued at $100. My two plus hours of bonus videos is valued at $100. And my 14 hours of recorded Q&A and formative conference calls is valued at $850. I also have a private Facebook group that's valued at $100 with a grand total of $2,250. That is way less than an art school degree. But instead of $2,250 for this course, I offer it for $599. That's way less than one four-day out-of-town workshop. But because you stayed with me for this webinar, I really appreciate it. And I want to offer you $100 off for a very low price of $499. I offer payment plans as well. I also have some wonderful bonuses. Bonus number one is $100 off the regular price. Just be sure to use coupon PAINTYOURBEST100. You must use this at checkout. Bonus number two, receive all the online PDFs via zip file. Bind them up and you'll have an awesome workbook. Bonus number three, my 11 page artist guide, Pam's five top tips to discover your personal voice. Bonus number four, my Simply Not catalog in PDF format with 60 full color pages. Bonus number five, my 2015 2016 Studio Notes ebook, which captures my two most transformative years and a 30 day money back guarantee. Thank you for joining me. Use the webinar special coupon Paint Your Best 100 and go to my website, www.artandsuccess.com slash pdpc. Be sure to use the coupon. And thanks again. I'll see you in the course.